2020, the COVID-19 pandemic brings the world to its knees. Borders are shut down to contain the spread of the disease. In many nations, there is a scramble to find adequate medical equipment, masks, PPEs, ventilators. As India shuts down, a decision is made that the only way forward is to be self-reliant. To make in India everything we need, medicines, kits, tests, ventilators. This is an ambitious task. How did India manage this? How did our scientific community propel this level of self-sufficiency? How did the COVID-19 pandemic play out in India? India's first case of COVID-19 was in January 2020. By early March, there was still a very small number of cases on the ground, less than 50. But the realization hit that with a country of our size and population, the numbers were bound to increase. We started assessing to see if we were prepared for the pandemic that would sweep our nation. And as we gauged the situation, it was clear that we needed to gear up in a big way to cope, especially if our goal was to be self-reliant. PPEs or personal protective equipment designed to safeguard the frontline workers was a very small industry in India. N95 masks were in shortage by middle of March 2020. The testing of people on the ground, which had been cited as the best way to keep numbers under control, had to be restricted because of not enough tests available. The availability of ventilators for extreme cases was likely to be problematic as there were not enough ventilators available. We had decided to be self-reliant, but how would this work out in reality? What happened was that India started gearing up. A framework was set up, propelled by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Funds were made available through the specially created PM Cares Fund. Procurement protocols were eased for the procurement of health essentials in this emergency. And organizations came together, public and private, to meet the need on the ground on various fronts. Let's see what happened in the case of masks. India was not producing enough masks, especially the N95 masks that were in such demand. The country was still importing large quantities of this mask. In the panic buying, as people started worrying about being infected, the medical community was worried that they would not be able to access masks. There was an urgent need to up mask production. Various organizations stepped up to meet this need. The DRDO started designing face masks in their Gwalior facilities. They also collaborated with local manufacturers to produce masks. Similarly, various other institutions like the IIT and the IISC also came up with variations on the mask. Various other private players, companies that made cars or perfumes or clothes geared up to make masks. Like Rashmi Rare Earth, a company based in Noida that specializes in making mobile phones and other electronics. They were keen to contribute in some way 
and so they diversified into the production of N95 and other medical masks. Today, a lot of products in surgicals are basically imported, or if they're manufactured, they're manufactured by brands which are from the foreign land. So we thought, why not we also start making the world-class surgical equipments? There was a relaxation in norms set by the Bureau of Indian Standards, which made it easier for private players like Rashmi Rare Earth to enter this space and scale up production. There were overall about a dozen private companies like Arvind Mills, Procter & Gamble and Carleo that started making masks around the same time. However, with the lockdown in place, labour was a challenge. Would an electronics company manage to find the expertise to pull this off? First off, let's look at an N95 mask in some detail. The mask is made of several layers of a special fibre called polypropylene. N stands for non-oil, meaning that if no oil-based particulates are present, then you can use the mask in the work environment. 95 means 95% 95 of airborne particles are filtered out by the mask. So, an N99 mask would filter out 99% of particles. The N95 mask filters particulates of 0.3 microns and above. A micron is one millionth of a meter. Just to give you an idea, the diameter of a human hair is about 70 microns. These masks can filter out bacteria and virus. N95 is a five-layered mask. So, your outer layer is 50 GSM Spellbond. Then you have 25 GSM Melblon, then you have 50 GSM PP Cotton and then you again have 25 GSM Melblon and then you have 25 GSM Spellborn. These five layers provide more protection than the three-ply single-use surgical mask. So it is useful for doctors. The other advantage is they don't need to be changed often and last the entire day. Special mechanisms were needed for making the material for these five layers. The polypropylene used is basically a kind of thermoplastic, which means it can be softened and moulded when it is heated, while retaining its structure and durability. The materials go through numerous processes machines like this, where they are subject to high pressure and temperatures in the range of 240 to 260 degrees Celsius. The resultant mixture is then sprayed on a sheet. Then charge is added to the material. This creates an electrostatic effect that attracts small particles, trapping them and preventing them from going through. This is what makes the mask 95% safe. Once the electrostatic effect is added, the material is bundled to form a roll. This is then further disinfected before the masks are made. The mask making is in many steps. First, the material is cut in the shape of the mask. Then, the nose pin is crafted. This is a definitive part of the mask since it prevents the entry of small particles and yet allows for comfortable breathing. Then, the five layers are compressed together. There is no stitching involved. This is done by pressing with a weight of 18 to 30 kgs. Then the mask needs to be sealed, both the outer and inner impression. This holds the material together, otherwise with five materials, it will move. Over the few months of production, the company has managed to streamline systems to maximize efficiency. When we entered this market, we were producing say about a lakh mask a day. But today our capacities are three and three half, three and a half lakhs a day. The other challenge was keeping the economics of the whole production line under control. February to April, mask was sold like gold. 300 rupees, 400 rupees, no matter what price came in, they started selling. What we did was, we gained the quality and we gave it at a, at a much sustainable price to the end user. When all of this production started, there was no clear mandate on whether masks were essential for everyone or just for the medical community. But with new medical knowledge, it has become clear that everyone would need a mask. So much so, that the manufacturing of masks and protective gear 
has been classified under the Essential Commodities Act by the Indian government. Our long-term clients are hospitals, but in COVID scenario, we are also supplying it to the retailers or the distributors who then go and send, sell it to the end user. The masks which were coming from China or from US, we have started manufacturing here itself. Since we are, we are manufacturing right from the raw material to a finished goods. So that's why we are able to supply it in India. And that's why we are Atman Nirbhan. With numerous organizations from both public and private spaces taking on this task, India soon had more than enough masks. In fact, the ban on the export of masks that had been enforced before the lockdown was lifted by June 2020. We had enough masks to share with the rest of the world. But what about other gaps in our system? Keep watching to see how India manages to manufacture enough ventilators to cope with the rising numbers of COVID cases. India Science Channel was launched in the year 2019 by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. The internet-based dedicated science web channel is being implemented and managed by Vigyan Prasar, committed towards science communication. The channel features science documentaries, discussions on current topics, interviews and different programs covering the entire landscape of science and technology to make science popular among the masses. India Science is a flagship project of Vigyan Prasar. And over an year and a half, we have produced more than 1,200 videos of different sizes, lengths, and are from different genre and for different domains for the people of the country. We've uh, we've taken, we've spoken, we've gotten, uh, we've dived deep into the reams of uh, different domains of science and technology, and we have uh, gotten news stories films, videos, in almost every format that you can think of. OTT, for that matter, is a great platform that helps uh, anybody to look for any news, any item, any uh, video, any documentary at any point in time. All you need to do is to subscribe a channel for it. One can also download India Science mobile app from Google Play Store or Apple Store to view this channel. Would India be able to achieve self-sufficiency in the COVID crisis? How would we manage all our medical supplies and equipment without relying on imports? From reports in other parts of the world, one big problem was a shortage of ventilators. This was leading to a terrible situation where medical professionals were being forced to decide who would get access to a ventilator and who would not. Data showed that 5% of cases of patients with COVID-19 would need a ventilator. So what is a ventilator and how does it help in the case of a COVID-positive patient? Simply put, a ventilator mechanically pumps oxygen into the body. In some severe cases, the COVID virus causes damage to the lungs, making it harder to breathe. To alleviate this, a ventilator is used to push air with increased levels of oxygen into the lungs. This gives the patient time to fight off the infection and hopefully recover. When the COVID crisis hit India in March 2020, there were only about 40,000 ventilators in use, which was just not going to be enough. And so, there was a concerned effort to try and get more ventilators made. Agva is a Delhi-based company that had been making ventilators since 2018. 
so we started with the aim of uh, reducing the cost of healthcare because uh, what we realized was that a uh, good number of people in our country are paying out of pocket for all the medical expenses and what we have seen is that most of the medical devices are coming from other parts of the world they are not made or manufactured in india with the onset of the covid pandemic and the understanding that we needed to quickly and efficiently scale up production agva was keen to make a contribution in a substantive way but how would they manage this the answer came in the form of a partnership with maruti who helped agva scale up production in last year we were doing approximately you can say around 50 odd ventilators a month with the advent of uh, covid uh, we had to really scale up the overall manufacturing process we have scaled up to 10000 ventilators a month what maruti helped with was in making some parts of the ventilators they also played a role in streamlining the system logistics fabrication and transportation what makes agva's ventilators unique first off let's look at the process that helps create their ventilators the heart of the machine is the pcb or the printed circuit board this circuit which has more than 700 components operates the entire ventilator the oxygen and other functionality tests of the pcb are done at this station once the pcb is fully tested it travels to the next station here the final base plate assembly is done using cables and other components after this the turbine that runs the ventilator is put together then the ventilator passes through a series of stations where different components are added once a component is added the conveyor belt moves it to the next station till it reaches at the sensor station it is here that the most important component the oxygen sensor is added the oxygen sensor controls and monitors the oxygen level of the patient since agva ventilators are portable special care is taken in the assembly with all tubes and cables once the ventilator is assembled stringent quality checks are done to test the sensor and the overall efficiency of the ventilator in terms of air delivery and sensor functionality the final test run of the ventilator is accompanied by the simulation of a lung once this is complete the brand name along with relevant logos are engraved using modern laser technology then after the cleaning and sanitization the ventilators are sent for packaging from here they are dispatched into the market power ventilator one is it is turbine driven so it only is weighing approximately 2 and 1/2 kilos so you can actually carry it anywhere uh, second is that you can actually uh, send these ventilators anywhere across the world so because of its small size and less dependability on the icu infrastructure so let's say if you want to use it at home you can use it at home if you want to convert let's say a hospital into a covid care facility you can do that with our ventilators because it does not need oxygen pipeline it does not need air pipeline it simply uh, it can simply pump in the uh, air uh, if the room air needs to be pumped you can simply do that uh, parallelly if let's say higher oxygen can uh, needs to be given it can be connected to a uh, whether a concentrator or you can also connect it to an oxygen cylinder and you can deliver that to the patient uh, but at the basic end the functionality is just like an icu ventilator the ventilator is easy to use a tablet is attached to it which makes monitoring and controlling very easy it consumes less power than most other ventilators It can be used easily at home also which can help when hospitals don't have space for all the covid cases. And most importantly, it is one of the least expensive ventilators in the world. Agva understood the need to be self-reliant. They sourced all parts locally. They designed ventilators in such a way that parts could be replaced without too much difficulty. Within 6 months from being at a point where we were importing equipment like ventilators we are at a point where we are able to export to other nations as well 
the uh, silver lining to all of this is that we have understood how important self reliance is for the country and because of that the policy makers the policies the kind of approval system has really uh, uh, come together to help the indian manufacturers it has led a lot of uh, funding to actually happen uh, in this sector which has really helped uh, the research to skyrocket but were similar research and solutions possible in other areas like covid testing keep watching as we explore how india scientific community came up with solutions to the lack of testing kits on the ground India Science Channel was launched in the year 2019 by the Department of Science and Technology Government of India. The internet based dedicated science web channel is being implemented and managed by Vigyan Prasar committed towards science communication. The channel features science documentaries, discussions on current topics, interviews and different programs covering the entire landscape of science and technology to make science popular among the masses. India Science is a flagship project of Vigyan Prasar. and over an year and a half we have produced more than 1200 videos of different sizes lengths and of from different genre and for different domains for the people of the country we've uh, we've taken we've spoken we've gotten uh, we've dived deep into the reams of uh, different domains of science and technology and we have uh, gotten news stories films videos in almost every format that you can think of ott for that matter is a great platform that helps uh, anybody to look for any news any item any uh, video any documentary at any point in time all you need to do is to subscribe a channel for it one can also download india science mobile app from google play store or apple store to view this channel We are exploring how India worked towards self-sufficiency in its fight against COVID-19. March 2020 saw India locked down to control the spread of the disease. Post the COVID lockdown, when the country started opening up, case numbers grew and started to spike. In order to handle the growing crisis it was clear that the first step would have to be diagnosing its presence which could only be done by testing more people But India did not have enough testing kits so even people with symptoms who had not been in contact with the covid positive patient were not getting tested Since we had no production of kits we were dependent on importing kits The Indian scientific community pushed their capabilities in an attempt to fill this gap Pune based MyLab Discovery is a molecular biology company that has developed tests for a host of other diseases like HIV and hepatitis B and C They started work on developing a test for COVID-19. I remember in January we started talking about if it hits a country like us at least few of the test should be available. So as a leading company in the world to develop other high end diagnostic tests like IDNAT. So we thought that definitely we should be the first company to have it. but it takes months sometimes years to develop a kit like this but pushed by the circumstances on the ground the team at my lab managed to come up with a testing kit in a remarkably short period of 6 to 7 weeks as of today my lab offers many of the tests required for covid-19 including the rt pcr test antigen test and the antibody test 
The gold standard of test today is the RT-PCR test. RT-PCR means reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. Let us see how it works. So what causes COVID-19? It is a virus called the SARS-CoV-2. This is a virus whose genetic material is a single strand of ribonucleic acid or RNA. The first step requires the extraction of the RNA. A simple swab taken from inside a person's throat or nose. Then, there is a three-step process that helps extract the RNA. First, lysis. This refers to the breaking down of the cell. Then comes binding and washing. With the addition of binding agent and the wash buffer, the sample is ready for elution. Elution is the process of extracting one material from another by washing with a solvent. A special elution solution is used in the purification of total RNA from cells. These swabs from patients yield only a tiny quantity of RNA, which is not adequate for the testing process. To overcome this problem, the RNA, a single-strand molecule, is converted into a two-strand DNA using an enzyme. This is known as reverse transcription. This is the RT of the RT-PCR. After the extraction, there is an amplification process which replicates and creates billions of copies of the DNA, enough to get detected. In this amplification process, the reagents required for the amplification are mixed with the extracted RNA and then the tube is processed in the RT-PCR instrument. The sample moves into the data analysis and result interpretation phase. After about an hour of amplification, data is generated that can be used for interpretation of the result. The results are obtained in the form of an amplification graph which is read and interpreted as positive or negative. In RT-PCR test, you directly detect the genetic material of the virus. So in order to detect, you have to take the sample, break all possible viruses if, if any present, remove the genetic material, purify it and then load on a PCR machine along with the PCR reagent to show that whether the signature is there or not. The test itself amplifies the signature. So let us say even if there is a one copy of the virus, it will make a billion copy before reading on the machine. That is why it increases the accuracy to a multifold. The RT-PCR usually takes 8 to 9 hours to get a result. However, the MyLabs test gives the result in 2.5 to 3 hours. However, the downside is it still needs a lab facility to conduct the test. In an enormous country like India, with rural populations needing to be tested, we needed a solution for a lab. Fundamental was very clear that a test has to be mass effective, mass accurate, uh, but affordable. And we will not be able to do all of this if we don't make it simpler for the customers to use it. The scientists at my lab came up with a unique innovation, a lab in a box. That's right, the entire lab is in a box. So anybody, anywhere can run the test. The box is filled with all the reagents. All that is required is to load in the biological samples. Once that is done, the rest of the process is done automatically by the machine. At the end, we get the strips ready to load in the PCR machine. This lab in a box can run tests for 32 samples simultaneously. The company has also come up with antibody and antigen tests. They were the first Indian company to develop a kit that got approval from ICMR. The kits are also priced reasonably, so it can be accessed by the larger numbers. We could see the urgency for our nation. Each of us have fought for our country and made sure that the products are readily available. 90% uh, of the components which have been also imported, I see that many of the companies have started making here self. Uh, we are very fortunate that we are there to support our country. No regret feeling I will have uh, or even the whole team of my lab will have for throughout their lifetime because we were present when the country needed most.